In this video, we're going to take a look at the review feature in the all-new Adobe Captivate 12.3 update. I put a lot of effort into the e-learning that I design, but I'm under no illusion that I don't own these e-learning courses. Someone else owns the e-learning courses, and because of that, I need to send these e-learning courses that I create to my stakeholder and possibly my subject matter expert for feedback and review. And of course, I've used third-party tools for this. I've simply uploaded it to web servers in the past, but it's really great to see that Adobe's now including a review feature built right into Adobe Captivate. Let's take a look at that today. Okay, so here's a project that I'd like to share with some other people for review. And the process is really straightforward. This is probably one of the easiest things you can do inside Adobe Captivate. In the bottom right-hand corner is a Share for Review button. If we press that, that opens up a Share for Review panel that you see here. It kind of takes over the Properties Inspector area here. Now, it pulls the title of this review from what you publish when you publish a course. This is the title that shows up in the Publish window. But we can override this with anything that we wish. In fact, if you wanted to perhaps add a date to it, you know, like you wanted to say January 15th or something like that, you could include that. This is completely customizable. I'm going to go ahead and create review and what happens here is the course essentially is being published and stored in Adobe servers. Now at this point the question comes up for a lot of people is, oh well how can I be sure that that is secure? It is Adobe server and you can also set this course up, which I'll show you in a moment, to be for individuals uh, alone. Like if you, you invite someone, you can make sure that it's only a private invitation. Right now it's set for public, but I can go in and I can make this a private review and invite additional people that I wish to invite. So for example, I'll type in one of my alternate email address is there and I'll select that. You have the opportunity to provide a message here where you could just say something as simple as please review and we can invite to view. Okay, I'll just click outside of that to get rid of that. What my reviewers will see is an email that looks something like this. So Paul Wilson has invited you to review Code of Conduct January 15th and that reviewer can follow the link open review and this will open up the project for them to take a look at the beauty of this is that they do not need adobe captivate installed so you literally can share this with anybody they don't need any special software other than an internet connection and a web browser quite frankly so here of course i'm logged in as me and so i'll see the opportunity as an author to invite additional people if I wish. But for now, let's put that aside and take a look at the course itself here. Okay, so here's the course here. It's on your left-hand side, and of course you'll see a panel on the right-hand side, and I can go ahead and add comments. Now, the comments are on a per slide basis. So I could add something like, I really, like the background image for this slide, okay? Now, now I can go ahead and press submit and that gets put down here, letting me know that this is feedback that I've received from Paul Wilson, and that they really like the background. So we'll obviously keep that background image. And if I move forward in the course, that feedback still shows up there because I have all screen comments selected. If I turn this off, I'll only see the comments for the current slide. And so we could add a comment for the current slide. We could say, I like the addition of the characters and we can press submit. 
and that shows up here. The neat thing about these comments, notice that there's a blue line next to the current comment, the one that's for this slide. And if I click on the previous comment, it actually jumps me back to that slide. So if I'm looking at this again and maybe reconsidering my comment, you know, it'll bring me right back to that position. The ellipses icon here, or the three dot icon, if you will, allows me to either edit my original comment or delete it. So let's say, for example, I really, I've had some time to think about this and I would say I would prefer the sky to be blue. Okay, and I can save that and that overrides my previous comment. Now, one of the things I can also do is filter comments. So we have a filter control down here. If I click on this, I can say, well, I want to see all the feedback from Paul Wilson from today and if anything has been resolved. I haven't resolved anything yet, so it basically clears that out. Let's clear the filter and we'll just click away and go back to the original view here. Later, when I'm reviewing this, I could be making these sorts of changes inside Captivate. And once something has been fixed, like, you know, making the sky blue, I can click on this resolve icon and that moves that comment to the resolved area. If you wish to see the resolved stuff, you can go over to filter and just select resolved. And you can see, oh, I took care of that. Excellent. Great. So let's just click away from that. Actually, I'll clear that out so we can see all of our comments here. Now, you may have noticed, or maybe you didn't, that these comments are specific to desktop view. One of the cool things about review in Adobe Captivate is that you can allow your reviewers to preview this on tablet and, of course, mobile and provide comments that are specific to those device types. So I could add here that on mobile, this looks a little crowded. Smaller font, please. And press submit. And of course, now you'll see that that's selected for mobile. And this way, if I'm just looking at all screen comments, I'll only see on the mobile, but if I go to tablet or desktop, I won't see that there. So probably a good idea, best practice for us as authors is to probably show all screen comments so we can see all the different views. One of the things I'm curious about, ah, yes. And in addition, you do have the option to provide feedback on mobile landscape as well. So I could say on landscape, this looks great and press submit. So now that feedback has been captured as well. Now, as an author, you'll have the opportunity to invite additional people as you go. So while I'm here, I can press invite and you know send this to someone else, maybe a different version of myself, and we can invite them to view it as well. So I'll now have multiple viewers looking at the course. And also too, that's where the filter is going to come in handy because we'll be able to select which reviewers we want to see from. Perhaps there's a main stakeholder for this course and a bunch of subject matter experts. In the end, it's the main stakeholder whose decision is final. So we can maybe only look at the subject matter experts when the stakeholder hasn't provided feedback on those particular slides. Let's go ahead and close this down here. And I'm just going to return to the Captivate project for a second here. If, for example, let's say I did change the background of this slide to uh, be blue instead of the color green here. So we could change this to a solid fill and I'll just select a color blue that might be sky-like <laughs> as an example there. So I can go back to my share for review icon and we can now update the review. And the cool thing about this, you don't need to send new invitations or anything. You just need to let the actual reviewers know 
that something's been changed. So if I follow this link here, I'll be able to see it as an author in this case here. We'll take a look at the course and you can see now my sky is blue. So I can actually go to any slide where, you know, that feedback has been given. Let's say, for example, I fixed the mobile view of this particular slide here. I can click on resolve and now I don't need to worry about seeing that in the list of things that I need to do as an author. Personally, I'm looking forward to using this workflow and sharing courses this way with my reviewers. I know it's going to save me time and it's obviously going to give me a very streamlined process. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.